You've all heard the story of Icarus, right? He flew too close to the sun. Well, the truth of the matter is, actually, it was a young man called Chris, who, after a night of way too much Bucky, decided to take a flight from the top of the, the Gorbals in Glasgow. And guess what? It didn't work too well. He landed on a bunch of guys doing heroin and, uh, well, died. No, I'm kidding, obviously. Uh, welcome to my channel. Hi, I'm Avangel, and this is the Scottish Aviation Bulldog by Black Box Simulations. Now, this aircraft was a it's a two-seat standard side-by-side trainer, uh, built originally by Beagle Aircraft, but then subsequently by Scottish Aviation. Hence the intro joke. But it originally flew in 69, and it was used by the RAF, the Swedish, the Hungarians, and a bunch of other militaries as a basic trainer. Uh, obviously, more recently replaced by the Grob, but has seen subsequent huge use in GA fields. And as a usual, Flight Sim can't work out what time I want to set for my reviews based on the in sim clock. See, I tell it to set me a certain time, and it never quite does it, does it? Now, this is my first look. We'll look at outside first, as we always do. The Bulldog, of course, is a light single engine, fixed gear aircraft, and it's got a, I think it's an O360 engine in there, IO360, four cylinder air cooled, horizontally opposed engine, 200 horsepower, so pretty reasonable. A two bladed Hartzell constant speed propeller, and a maximum speed of 130 knots. So, not terrible. Surface ceiling of 16,000 feet, and a range of 540 nautical miles. Now, Black Box have released two aircraft so far. They've released the Bird Dog, the O1, and the Islander, both of which have been fantastic aircraft. Now, visually, this is rather nice, actually. I haven't been disappointed by Black Box's aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator yet. In fact, they've all been very nice. Oh, what's that say? Oh, making sure you know exactly what fuel to put in it, of course. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that is crispy. I like that. So externally and visually, very, very nice. Internally, this isn't just a lack of polygons. This is what the dashboards look like in the in, in the uh, the bulldogs. They are rudimentary ass little aeroplanes. Now, there we go. Do you want to open? Is there a lock? That doesn't want to open for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Good start to things. I don't know why that doesn't want to open. Oh. Canopy lock. There we go. See, that's just me. Oh, I have to click and drag. Nice. Okay. Okay, so authentic operation there. I'll give it that. Here's our throttle. Um, overall, internal texturing is reasonable. It's, I wouldn't say it's as good as the Islander personally. But it is very authentic. The aircraft are this plane looking inside. I don't know, somehow I think the texturing looks a little bit lower than it could be, personally. And that's a doubling up of glass effect because the canopy is pulled back over that, so I'm not going to give them any minus points for that one. But, uh, okay, so let's get ourselves set up for departure, shall we? Parking brake is set. Fuel is set. Battery on. Okay, we have power. Flip everything on here. We should be good for start. This is just in the wake of Sim Update 7 or the Game of the Year edition, so any weirdness we could just chalk up to that because, frankly, it's been another congratulations, Asobo. You've, you've done a fantastic job on that one. Let's give her a start, shall we? Okay, that's interesting. Again, could be a sync issue between the... Uh, if I set this to both and I just press the button, watch it work perfectly. Do I need to make sure I've got the fuel condition lever pressed in? No, I want it open so I can press the button. A little bit of throttle. Yeah, there we go. So a little bit of gas in there as well, and uh, not using the honeycomb starter. Because that does have some issues with aircraft that are programmed up a certain way with a separate starter compared to an actual... Let's close the canopy. 
soon I'll have my head tracking working and we'll be all good to go in that regard. There we go, canopy is locked. So, the aircraft is relatively simple. It's a trainer and a basic trainer at that. So, it is a very gentle aircraft. And yes, they sound like a tractor in real life. So, this is very appropriate engine sounds. Right, let's take a look outside, shall we? That sounds exactly like a bulldog. I'll give them that. They do sound this rough. And yes, it is actually a stopwatch stuck to the dashboard. <laughs> I love it. And I thought initially visibility with that pillar would be a bit of a problem, but it's really not. You can barely see it when you're actually looking forwards. So fantastic forward visibility, fantastic sideways visibility. Tons of room. And at least it's nice and smooth so when you're looking past it, it won't look weird. But the aircraft is very easy to fly, very easy to ground handle. I'm not seeing any performance impacts of the simulator either, so we're winning positives on that note. Okay, and we're looking good here. Okay, let's get ourselves going. There was no manual included in the aircraft, but there may be one to download on the website. I like how you have to give it more power than it really wants to get it rolling rather than just a little bit of power starts moving because that doesn't happen in real aircraft. Let's get ourselves moving here. Easy to maintain direction on the runway. Airspeed's coming alive. And we're airborne. Nice. So, yeah, I think maybe the visual acuity on this one is perhaps the one downside I'm seeing so far. It, I, I like the aircraft, I like its sounds, and from what I'm feeling right now from the handling, it feels fantastic and the materials are good. I just think it's maybe slightly let down by some of the textures. Some of them feel a little FSX-y, which is a slight disappointment to me, because I expected something more akin to the Islander, I think, and in fact, yeah, the bird dog. Like, Black Box have put out two fantastic aircraft so far, and this one has all the hallmarks of being just as good as their others. As you can see, no more flickering glass now, the canopy's not over it. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but as much as it looks authentically like a bird dog in here, and it does look good. And in the grand scheme of things, it's more than good enough, and for a price of about £20. Not expensive in the grand scheme of things. Let's see how she stalls. Does she stall like an actual bulldog? Let's find out, shall we? Rather low for a stall practice, but we're going to stall clean. Straight and level. She will fly pretty slowly as well about 50 knots if you're careful. Hold the nose. It should mush when it stalls. Come on, stall for me. That's it. You're always going to have a good airflow over the actual wing roots with the propeller turning, so it makes it a little bit harder to stall it super clean. Yeah, it's just mushing on me. Okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty authentic to the Bulldog. It has a very, very depressing mush of an aircraft and how they actually stall, so... Yeah, this feels like an aircraft designed in the 60s and built as a basic trainer. The look is good, it's clean. I'll give it that. Maybe just think some of the textures could be higher resolution is my only concern. Um, notably the panel and the central console, that feels like the one let down point, really. And uh, maybe the whiskey compass housing up there, because it's right in your eye line. But the aircraft overall isn't bad. I really kind of like it. I'm gonna have no problem flying this thing at all. In fact, this feels already like one that's going to end up in my personal collection as an aircraft that I want to operate. Let's bring around for a landing here at Orcas Island. Okay, 
Okay, power back. Set flaps first notch. Okay, there we go. Big slab wings. This comes with a lot of liveries, as you saw earlier, and there's a good number of civilian versions, including rather a cool Red Arrows tribute, which I quite like. But, yeah, this feels and looks like the Bulldog. It really does. Um, other than, I, I'm griping when it comes to the textures. I'm really picking straws there, but in terms of its sounds, its handling, its behavior, this thing feels amazing. I've never flown one myself, personally, but I have flown in them. And the constant niggle that you could hear something rattling. Very bulldog. Yeah. Second notch of flaps. Lined up on center line. Nice stable final. Bringing in about 60 knots. Descending down towards the runway. And it has a very placid approach profile from what I've seen. They're a very, I wouldn't say super floaty, but they definitely hit ground effect with being a low wing aircraft. But as you can tell, the visibility is stunning in these things. They are really good. I'm a little bit low on my approach here, so let's give it a bit more power. First time touching this aircraft entirely. I haven't even loaded it before I did this review. On the numbers. Very nice. Okay. That allowed me to place it exactly where I wanted. That is very, very nice. Okay. I, I like this. Um, most of the aircraft I think is fantastic, apart from... Oh, that reflection. Oh, boy. That's crinkly. Um, most likely because it's at the corner of a curved reflective surface. But, yeah, the, the cowl looks very matte and very uh, 2D from out the window. My, my only real gripes with this aircraft are... And I love the pedals. That's really, really, really bulldog. Now, I think my biggest gripe is the textures, probably. The resolution on some of the textures just doesn't feel high enough in this sim. It's a great-looking aircraft. Its handling and its sound does feel very good. And Black Box's recent updates to what they've done with sound for the Bird Dog and for the Islander have been stunning. They sound amazing. And I will say the ground handling of this aircraft is one of the better ones because even on asphalt you do need to give it quite a bit of goose to get it moving and to pick up speed once you're at low speed they'll maintain speed relatively well rolling but uh, aircraft are heavy and when your wheels aren't powered you need to give them quite a bit of juice to actually move them most don't do that, most you can give a little bit of power and they'll roll but I've noticed some of the better setup flight models you need to give them quite a bit to actually get them rolling which is authentic so that is a nice touch. And this one is, flight handling wise, very, very good. The engine sounds are very, very good. And the price is reasonable, about 20 pounds. Again, the only letdown I think is the textures. The modeling is fantastic. The textures are my only gripe. Some of them just aren't quite at par. Like as you can see here on the side, this is a texture, then this is technically part of the same texture but it's the same map so you can see stretching there which considering this is right in the stupid changes to the mouse since sim update 7 so you can see some stretch where it rolls over that's a bit of a disappointment like that could be a lot better i don't know why it auto zooms out the second i actually click the mouse when i'm looking which it didn't used to do screw you asobo and your constant changes to little things that didn't need changing but the aircraft is a good one I don't feel disappointed having bought this. I think it has room for improvement, which black box are known to do. And now I can actually do this and it doesn't end the flight, which is fantastic. But black box are known to do quite a lot of improvement on their aircraft and updates. And they're very regular with them. So if it has some deficiencies, you can guarantee they'll fix them. I really like this. And it's an aircraft I haven't really seen done well before in the sim. I've seen it in X-Plane. But in FSX, it never really landed. It's a fun airplane. Tons of visibility. Really enjoyable to fly. Reasonable cruise. I will likely still fly this thing. 
no matter what. It's got some little bits, but they don't bother me. On my out of 10 scale, I will put this at a, a 7. Only let down, really, by some of those textures. Um, I think the aircraft overall is great. Its in-sim performance is negligible. Its handling and sounds are fantastic. Worth the money, for certain. And a very nice little plane. Hopefully this helps, guys, so thanks for watching. Bye.